Hi, good morning. Welcome back to another video. This is going to be one of my less edited videos because I was reading something this morning that is probably one of the most beautiful things that I've gotten to read in the Bible. And I just read the book of Hosea for my first time. And if you've read the book of Hosea, you're probably saying, Taylor, are you crazy? Why is that <laughs> such a beautiful book? And I read it just all in one sitting. It's not a very long book, but I just feel like I was able to just know God in a way that I never knew him before. And that's what reading the Bible is, right? Like a lot of it is you getting to know God. I feel like a lot of people that misinterpret the Bible, they're trying to get something for themselves out of it, something that they want to figure out more about themselves, which that's in here. But mainly the Bible is... God and God's character. And the more I've matured with Christ, the more I've gotten to understand that. And I read it in just such a different perspective. And it also took me from being a cherry picker Bible reader to someone who just sits and gets to know God more and more each morning as I read a book in its entirety and I read a chapter in its entirety whereas when I first started my walk with Jesus I would cherry pick the Bible for verses about anxiety verses about fear or worry stuff that I battled with and then nothing would really happen and I just kept saying these verses over and over again like a magic trick and I was like this should be changing me right but I wasn't sitting in the scripture. I wasn't reading what was around it. And I wasn't getting to know God's character. I was just wanting to know what can I take out of this and how can I get rid of my anxiety? How can I get rid of my fear and worry and my depression, all of these things? And I came at it with a different attitude. And that was when I started to experience freedom from those things because I got to see God's perspective on those things. And that's when true healing came. But I read the book of Hosea this morning and the book of Hosea, which is crazy, the, the name Hosea, it literally means salvation. And it comes from the same Hebrew root, Hosea, I think it's Hosea, as the name, same as the names jo, uh, Joshua and Jesus, which is really cool. Throughout the book of Hosea, we see that salvation is turning to the Lord and away from our sin. And we see God's people turn from him because it was a time where people were politically successful and economically prosperous. So they were in a position where they felt like they didn't really need God, right? And I feel like most of us have been there, right? Even after we give our lives to Jesus, we end up running back to things that we think serve us more than God does because we get that instant gratification, right? Especially here in America, we want instant gratification all the time. And God's sometimes really slow. He's, he's slow, but fast at the same time. But some of us don't want to wait and we want that instant gratification from sin and pleasures of this world. And that's what the people in this book of Hosea, they're turning from God and they're turning to false idols, to, to idol worship, to Baal, which is not that much different today, right? Thousands of years ago, they're worshiping Baal. But the entire book of Hosea, so I'm reading it this morning and <laughs> I decided to take it on this morning and like halfway through the book. And if you've read Hosea, you totally know what I mean. But halfway through the book, I'm like, God, I don't know if this was like a good book to start my day today because we just see God's pain and hurt and anger towards sin and towards people choosing the things of this world and choosing to worship the things in this world over him. It's actually really sad. And it's just changes the way you look at God in so many different ways too, because of how much pain this brings him, you know, and, and he's showing his heart. And we see in 13 for God's response in his heart posture towards this. And he says, yet I am the Lord, your God ever since the land of Egypt, and you shall know no God, but me for there is no savior beside me. I knew you in the wilderness, in the land of great drought, when they had pasture, they were filled when they were filled and their heart was exalted. Therefore they forgot me. They forgot me because their hearts were exalted, because they were filled. How many times do we pray to God for something and he gives it to us? And then we're instantly running back to the things of this world. And God's like, man, they forgot me. I just did all that for them and they forgot me. And we also get to see that God does so many things that we don't even know he's doing. In Hosea 11, 3, we see, I taught Ephraim to walk taking them by their arms, but they did not know that I healed them. 
They didn't know that he healed them. I drew them with gentle cords, with bands of love, and I was to them as those who take the yoke from their neck. I stooped and fed them. And it just makes me think of so many of the things that God has done for us in our lives, even before we gave our lives to him, that we don't even realize he was there. And, and if I look back at my life, he has truly, I truly believe he has saved me <laughs> from so many different things that probably should have taken my life, no joke. And it isn't until the final, final, final chapter of Hosea that things finally turn around and God puts them in a position of repentance. And I'm thankful for this in my life too, because I've gotten to see God when I ran back to things in this world. He doesn't let me stay there, right? Oh, sorry. I dropped my camera. But what I love is that God just doesn't give up on us when we choose the things of this world, right? He's going to do everything he can to put us in a position where we understand that we need him. And it's so beautiful because the very, very last chapter of Hosea, his people come to repentance and they said, take away all iniquity. Receive us graciously, for we will offer the sacrifices of our lips. Osiris shall not save us. We will not ride on horses, nor will we say any more to the work of our hands. You are our gods, for in you the fatherless find mercy. And this is God's response. And this is how different God is than us. Because if you read the book of Hosea in its entirety, you would not expect God to respond the way that he did, nor would we ever respond in the way that God does. So this is what God says back, and I thought this was so beautiful. He says, I will heal their backsliding. I will love them freely, for my anger has turned away from him. I will be like the, the dew to Israel. He shall grow like the lily and lengthen his roots like Lebanon. His branches shall spread. His beauty shall be like an olive tree and his fragrance like Lebanon. Those who dwell under his shadow shall return. They shall be revived like grain They and grow like a vine. Their scent shall be the, the wine of Lebanon. So what we see here, if you really break it down, what is restored when we return to the Lord? And so many people have walked away from God and, and returned back to him, and, and that might be you. Or maybe you feel like, I sinned again, and God probably doesn't even want to look at me. This is like the perfect book for you to, to press into. And we might, some of us might find ourselves here again, unfortunately, because we never learn, right? <laughs> no, we should. But we see in this in this chapter in God's response, we see that when we return back to God and turn away from our sin, healing instantly begins. We see that growth is restored. We see that beauty is restored. Strength is restored. Value is restored. Delight is restored. And abundance is restored. And he's just, it just got, it finally showed me today. I finally understood that God is, is the God of restoration. And I just feel like I got to know him on a whole different level. So that's why I wanted to make this video today, this little Bible study with you guys, because that's what happens when we read the Bible, guys. We get to know our God. We get to know who created us and who loves us. And we get to see his heart. I pray that with this video, you got to know our God a little bit more, your father who loves you and how he sees you, how he sees sin, how much it hurts him and how forgiving he is towards towards such a wicked generation of people. But all right, I love you guys. God bless you and I'll see you for our next video, all right? And I'll see you in the comments. Let me know uh, let me know what you thought of today's Bible study. Okay. Love you guys. God bless you. See ya.